Good afternoon, boys and girls. Today I'm going to read you a story called The Big Red Tractor and the Little Village. Once upon a time, in a happy little village, a big red tractor lived in a cozy little shed. Every winter, when the snow started to melt after the winter was over, the villagers knew it was time to plow their field. So every morning, they'd go out to the little shed and wake up the big red tractor. They loved the powerful putt, putt, kaboom noises he made. And they cheered because the big red tractor helped them with their hardest job, plowing the field. Everyone worked together to move the big red tractor through the field. Half the villagers pushed him and uh, the other half pulled him. He smiled cheerfully, glad to help, even though they never seemed to move him very far. The villagers worked very hard and they always finished plowing the field just in time to plant delicious vegetables and sweet fruit before the rain came. The rain fell from the sky and watered the field. The sun came out and made the seeds grow. Finally, the villagers gathered all the food in large baskets. Everyone celebrated. Everyone shared. There was just enough food to feed the whole village. Then one cold day, something amazing happened. Farmer Dave was cleaning out his attic and discovered a book tucked inside an old chest. It explained how the big red tractor had been made and it showed powerful things no one knew he could do. You see what it says? Owner's manual. Farmer Dave stayed up all night long reading the book. He couldn't wait to tell everyone what he had discovered. The next morning, Farmer Dave gathered the villagers to tell them the good news. The big red tractor can move on his own. If we fix him, he could plow the entire field in just one day. But nobody believed him. There's no way that tractor can move on his own, they said. It sounds like a fairy tale. They laughed at him and went back to their work. This made Farmer Dave very very sad. But Farmer Dave didn't stop believing what he had read. Every night while the villagers were asleep, Farmer Dave stayed up late fixing the big red tractor. Finally, after many nights, Farmer Dave was done. He jumped on to the big red tractor and turned him on Put, put, kaboom. He jumped in the driver's seat and had so much fun that he plowed the whole field that very night. The next morning, the villagers woke up surprised. What, their work was done for them and they would not have to spend many weeks pushing and pulling the big red tractor. It's a miracle. Who did this? Look over there. It was Farmer Dave asleep on the big red tractor. The people shouted happily, Farmer Dave was right. The tractor book is true. That year, the villagers plowed and harvested many fields. They had so much extra food that they were able to share it with people in other villages who needed it. When they visited other villages, Farmer Dave and the Big Red Tractor always took the book with them so they could teach others the wonderful news they'd learned. 
The little village kept sharing and the villagers became known as the most generous people in the world. Did you know that you are like the big red tractor? God made you and he knows just how you work best. He wrote a book full of truth that you can read to help you know how to live too. The Bible tells us that if we try to do things on our own, we won't accomplish much. But if we trust Jesus, God gives us his spirit, so we'll have new power. Power to love others and tell them the good news about God. God made us to be a blessing to others. Through the spirit, we can do great things just like Jesus. This verse says, when the Holy Spirit comes to you, you will receive power, Acts 1, verse 8. And that is the story of the big red tractor. It's sort of like a modern day parable, like we were talking about with some of our other books that we read, that the Bible is the owner's manual. The Bible teaches us how we should live. And we want to spread the good news about Jesus and do good because the Holy Spirit will help us do that. Um, just like the villagers shared and became the most generous village in the book, um, we need to look for ways that we can share with others, give to others, do things to help others. Um, maybe an example is that you have um, an elderly neighbor um, that might need you to go pick up sticks in their yard or might need you to rake leaves or um, just bring in their um, newspaper for them if the newspaper boy throws it you know not close to the house um, maybe you have um, young neighbors like somebody that has a child that's younger than you are and they're, they don't have anybody to play with and you could teach them a new game or um, share a toy with them. Maybe you could even pass on to them something that you've outgrown that you don't um, use anymore. We can always look for ways to show Jesus' love to others. Even if it's just going to the grocery store, right now you're probably not going to the grocery store. You're probably staying home um, with one of your parents while the other one goes to the grocery store um, because of the virus. But in the grocery store, or even at home, if you don't go to the grocery store, you can say thank you. You could write um, thank you notes to the workers who are working so hard in the grocery store. or to the doctors and nurses and uh, mail carriers and police officers that are working so hard um, and are at risk because they're out in the public every day working. So um, you could color them a picture and write thank you on it um, and then put it in your mailbox for the mailman to pick up or the mail mail carrier to pick up. Um, you could do the same thing and give it to your mom or dad and have them hand it to somebody at the grocery store that's working at the grocery store. Um, there are many, many ways that we can still reach out and show Jesus love even if we're uh, at, at home. Um, you try to think of some ways that um, you could do some things to encourage others. Um, maybe a phone call to one of our elderly people that's by themselves. Um, or a little colored sheet that you could mail to them, a coloring page. 
I know some of you are really good colorers um, and some of you are very good at drawing things. Um, that would brighten their day because they can't get out and see people either. Um, I love you. I hope that you will shine for Jesus in your house by obeying your parents, by helping out at home, by doing your schoolwork well and cooperatively. Um, be kind and show love, and I'll see you later. Bye.